data set distribution unit test review. Find the interquartile range, the IQR of the data, and the dot plot below. So what we want to do is we want to write the uh, numbers from the dot plot here. So we have a 2 followed by two threes, followed by four fours, followed by two fives, followed by a six, and a seven. So what we want to do is we want to find the middle number of the median. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're going to go over five numbers here. One, two, three, four, five. So it should be this number four in the middle. So we should have five to the right, one, two, three, four, five, and five to the left. The middle number here is three, so that's quartile one. So this is quartile one. And this five right here is quartile three. So what you want to do is you want to take quartile 3, what that value is, and subtract it by quartile 1. So we want to take 5, subtract this by 3, and this gives me 2. The term with the following is a statistical question. What is the typical height? height of the dog kennels at Kita's kennels. So right here, since we just don't know what the typical number is on this for the height, this would be statistical. Which of the following are accurate descriptions of the distributions below? So the distribution below, if we look at the chart here, we want to find that we're going actually from highest to lowest. So the distribution has a peak between 9 and 10. No. The uh, distribution has a gap from 6 to 9. So from 6 to 9 there's a gap there. No it's not. So really both of those statements there are false. So this one would be C. The following table below shows the number of snow days each school district in Mill County has had last winter. Find the mean, that is the absolute, uh, which is abbreviated as MAD of the uh, data sets. We want to find the absolute de deviation here. So we want to find the means. We want to take 6 plus 8 plus 3 plus 2 plus 6 and divide this by 5. So we want to take 6 plus 8 plus 3 plus 2 plus 6. So 6 plus 8 is 14. 14 plus 3 is 17. 17 plus 2 is 19. 19 plus 6 is 25. So we want to say 25 divided by 5. So we find that the mean itself is 5. Now, we're finding a special type mean. We're finding the mean of absolute de uh, deviation here. So let me erase the work here. And what we want to do is take each one of these numbers here and subtract it by the 5. So whatever, whatever number is larger, that's what we're going to subtract by. So sometimes we're going to use the data numbers first, subtract them by the mean, and sometimes the mean. So right here, 6 is bigger. So we're going to say 6 subtract 5 is 1. 8 is bigger than 5, so we're going to say 8 minus 5 is 3. Now 3 is not bigger than 5, so we're going to say 5 minus 3 is 2. Now we have 2, so we're going to say 5 minus 2 is 3. 6 is bigger, so 6 minus 5 is 1. So what we want to do now is add these numbers up. So we want to say 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1. So we have 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1. So 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. 
uh, 6 plus 3 is 9, and 9 plus 1 is 10. Now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to take 10 and divide it by 5. So we're going to find that our mean of absolute deviation, which is abbreviated by MAD, M-A-D, is equal to 2 because 10 divided by 5 is 2. How many pumpkins are in Leonard's uh, patch here? So we have 4, 5, 8, 6, and 2. So we have 4, we have 5, we have 8, we have 6, and we have 2. So let's add these numbers up. So we're going to say 4 plus 5 plus 8 plus 6 plus 2. So right here, this would be 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 plus 8 is 17. 17 plus 6 is 23. 23 plus 2 is 25. So again, we want to add 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 plus 8 is 17. 17 plus 6 is 23. 23 plus 2 is 25. So that's the total number of pumpkins we have. The data set below represents the number of desks on each floor of tech stores uh, corporate. So if we look at this, the numbers are in order from lowest to highest. We start with 54 and we end with 76. So let's take a look at all these right here. Do they all start at uh, 54? They all start at 54. They all end at uh, 76. Now, next part, what, what makes these different though? If we look at these, we have two of them that actually have the same first quartile. This one does not. Uh, another thing that's uh, different about them is this has a medium. See, the median is the middle number here. This medium here would be actually 70. So this would actually be 70 here. And this median here would be 69. And this median is also 70. And then the last part, the, the uh, quartile 3, quartile 3 is at 73. 73 and 72. So let's go and find what the uh, what the median is. So since these numbers are in order, how many numbers do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we have 11 numbers. So we want to count over 5 and then count over 5. So you see that the middle number itself is 69. Let me erase, let me write this a little bit better. So the middle number, the median is 69. And we actually did have one that was actually at 69. So it appears that B should be our answer. The following table shows the number of internet users in 2012 for the highest US, or actually highest uh, using countries. So we have China with 568. The U.S. with 254, India is with 152, Japan is 101, and Brazil is 100. Find the median number of internet users. So what we want to do is we want to take the numbers and put them from smallest to largest. So we want to go 100, 101, 152, 254, and 568. So we have 100. We have 101, 152, 254, and 568. We want to find a median number, so that would be the number that's exactly in the middle. See, here it is. It's the 152, because there's two numbers to the right and two numbers to the left. So we type in 152. The data below shows how old each of Brad's eight kids were when they started kindergarten. So we want to uh, do a frequency table. So how many threes do we have? Well, we only have one three. How many fours do we see? One, two, three, four, and five. How many do we have that were uh, five? 
5 appears twice. Now remember the keyword here is 8, so if you add these up here on the frequency 1 and 5 is 6 plus 2 is 8, it should equal that number. So again, there's only one 3. We said that there's uh, 5 4s, and as for the 5, there's two of those. Melanie went on an enchantment walk through magical rainforest. The frequency table below shows the number of legs that each of the eight cre tre creatures she saw had. Using this data, create a dot plot where each dot represents the number of creatures. So, zero. Zero, what we want to do is we want to show that there was two dots here. Because we have a number two here, so we want to show it by two dots. One, there's only one uh, number there, so there's only one dot. As for two, we want to show it with three dots. Three, we want to show that with two dots. So again, the zero should show two dots. The one should show one dot. The two should show three dots. And the three should show two dots. Find the mean of the data in the bar chart below. And these are the number of puppets. So let's go ahead and cut this on. We have one, we have four, we have three, and we have two. So we want to find the mean. So the mean is, is like an average. So we want to add these numbers up. Since we have four puppets here, we want to divide it by four. So we're going to take one, plus 4, plus 3, plus 2. So 1 plus 4 is 5. So now we're going to say 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. So we want to take 10 now and divide this by 4. Well, 10 fourths we lose a fraction becomes 5 over 2. Now, if we took 5, divided it by 2, you're going to get 2.5. So our meme here, our average, would be 2.5. Coins collected by each person in a scavenger hunt. So right here, we know what Alice did. Alice had six. Davy had five. Lucas had uh, six. And Carter had eight. We don't know what Julia had. If the mean of the data is six, find the number of coins Julia found. So what we want to do is there's six coins. Well, how many people do we see? We see one, two, three, four, and five. So we want to take that five and times it by the mean, because the mean is 6. And this gives me 30. Now I want to add up these numbers here. So I want to take uh, 6. So I want to take this 6 plus this 8 plus this 5 and plus this 6. So we have the 8, the 6, the 5, and the 6. Well, 6 plus 8 is 14. 14 plus uh, 5 is 19. 19 plus 6 is 25. So we know that the overall total should be 30 because we take 5 times the 6 people. Here's 30 because the mean was 6. We subtracted by what we know. We know the number is 25. So the missing number would be... Five. So Julia would be five. Sal counted a number of songs on each album in his collection. He then created both a dot plot and a box plot to display the same data. So which uh, display makes it clear that none of the songs albums had 15 songs on it? Well, here the dots represent 
uh, the albums with the number of songs. So you can see that with the dots there, it's more laid out. So here we have one seven, here we have two have eights, nines, two nines, four tens, and so forth. Here we don't we don't have that, that detail. We have where it starts, where it ends, what the median is, uh, what the first quartile is, and what the third quartile is. That's all identified there. So the best one that has uh, more information to show us uh, which display makes clear that none of the albums had 15 songs, that would definitely be the dot plot. Now when you're talking about interquartile ranges, that would be the box plot because we said this is our first quartile, this is our second quartile, and this is our third quartile. So the number of songs would be the interquartile, that would be the box plot. Stanley makes paper constellations. The following data point represents how many stars were in each constellation. So we want to start with the smallest, which is four. The next one is seven, followed by nine, followed by twelve, followed by eighteen, and twenty-four. So we have one four, we have one seven, and we have one nine. We have two twelves, one eighteen, and one twenty-four. So from this information, we want to go ahead and make a histogram. So we want to see what's between 0 and 5. Well, 0 and 5 is just 1. It's at 4. Now we want to look between 5 and 10. So 5 and 10, we have 2, which is 7 and 9. Now the next layer is uh, 10 and 12. So the next level is actually 10 and, no, actually 10 to 15. So the next level goes from 10 to 15. So 10 to 15, we have two 12s. The next level is from 15 to 20. So 15 to 20, we have 18. So that's one. The last level is from 20 to 25, and that's just uh, 24. Okay, Chucky grabbed 12 items in a grocery store that each had different price and had a mean cost of about seven dollars and forty one cents one of the item was an entire wheel of cheese that cost thirty nine dollars and ninety nine cents Chucky then decided to put the wheel of cheese back and only buy the eleven items so initially he had twelve items so he had twelve items in the grocery so in this grocery cart he had 12 items that had different prices uh, that were at a mean cost of $7.41. So what does that mean? That means that uh, for the most part those items were fairly close at $7.41. What the outlier was was this one particular item which cost $39.99. That's a lot bigger than $7.41. So he decides to take that item and place it back. So now he only has 11 items in his cart. Well, these 11 items in his cart now will be much closer in price to the 741. You don't have this odd price of 39.99, so it's not going to jump your bill up and make the cost much higher because you've taken that away. So everything is sitting around $7.41. So how will removing the wheel of cheese affect the mean and the median? Well, what's going to happen is they're both going to decrease. They both will decrease. So both the mean and the median will decrease. So obviously C and D is not even going to be used because they're both increased. So now we want to determine is which one is affected more. Is the median affected more or the mean, which is the overall average? Remember, the median is the true middle number that's not going to change that's going to be about the same what will change will be the overall average that will change because you're no longer adding into your total the 39.99 you're taking that out so of course the overall average the mean is going to decrease more than the median so this should be b the number of band members by high school in orange county 
So the box plot suggests that about 50% of high schools in Orange County have more than what number of band members? So we want to take a look at which one is at 50%. So this 80 would, re would actually represent zero. So let me write a better zero here. So this would be 0%. This 90 would represent 25%. And again, let me put, make that a little bit better. So this would be 25. This is your median. This is 50%. This is quartile three, this would be 75%. Uh, and then your last dot here would be 100%. Now what the question is asking is 50%. So what number matches with 50%? So if we look down here between 100 and 110, well that number in between would be 105. So this would be 105 because that's the number is exactly between 100 and 110. So our answer here would be C. The histogram summarizes the size of each house on Prince Street. So what is a typical area of the houses on Prince Street? So when they talk about typical, we want to look at what, what is the highest here. So the highest one is right here. See, this is like zero. This is like 50 to 100. This is 100. So, so let's make this a 50 here. This is 100. So that would be uh, 150. And this would be 250. So the typical one would be the highest one. So it looks like we're running from 150 to 200. So 150 to 200. Mr. Munoz had a students in, in his three classes, periods, actually class periods, write essay for a diagnostic test. The following dot plot shows a score from each class. Each dot represents a different score. We want to go from least to greatest. So we want to start the one to the left. So we want to look for the graph that's to the left. Look for the and finish with the graph that going to the right. So you see this graph right here is is to the left. A lot of dots to the left. Here's a lot of dots to the right. That's what we want to finish up with. And this one is in the middle. So that's going to be our our one that's going to be in in the second place. So the first place what we want to start off with is the one that's all to the left here. Then we want to place the middle one in, in the second position because that's in the middle. And then you want to finish up with the one that has more of the dots to the right. So that's how you go from least to greatest. So this is the left, this is the middle, and this is the dots to the right.